Dr. Lee, and this is Dr. Lee's inspiration. Thank you for joining me today. Today, our topic is inspire someone. We'll be looking at Matthew. So if you don't have your Bibles, run and go get your Bibles. And we'll be looking at Matthew 7 and 12. I'll turn my Bible there. Matthew 7 and 12. And our topic is inspire someone. And while you're running to go get your Bibles or writing the Bible scripture down, this is my book, Keep It Moving. It's all about keeping it moving in your life. Keep it moving, not another mantra, but a way of life. I also have t-shirts that say, let go, let God, and keep it moving. I have a youth group called Keep It Moving Youth Group. And so there's a lot of things that I do with um, Keep It Moving. I also do speaking engagement, and a lot of time I send on my speaking engagement around keeping it moving. And whatever the, if it's a conference or if it's whatever it is that I'm speaking for, um, I always center around keep it moving. I always try to inspire someone or motivate someone to live their best life, to, to go after their dreams, go after their goal. Put God first and you can, you can achieve anything, anything and everything you put your mind to and you keep God first and have God to guide you. And so this is my book, Keep It Moving. And like I said, I have a youth group, Keep It Moving Youth Group. And I also have this television show, which is called Dr. Lee's Inspiration, but it's all about Keep It Moving. I also have a website, which is www.pleasekim.com. www.pleasekim.com. Also, at the bottom of the screen throughout the show, you will see the toll free number, which is 1 888 Me Kim Inc. 1-888-MEKIMINC. If you'd like to email me, you can email me at Dr. Lee at PleaseKim.com. And that's D-R period L-I at PleaseKim.com. Okay? So if you have your Bibles, Matthew 7 and 12. This inspire someone. And this is coming from the King James Version. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Again, let me read that. It says, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophet. I have in my notes here, to do something to help someone. Don't let everything be done just for yourself. Do something for others, help someone. Do a random act of kindness. And so that's our topic, inspire someone. So I'm gonna talk about inspiring someone, but Matthew 7, 12. It's all about inspiring someone. Treat someone like you want to be treated. Do, do something for someone. And I'm going to give you a couple of stories and I'm going to talk a little more about inspiring someone. Whenever you, whenever you inspire someone, you inspire someone to do something positive, to do something, something courageous, something different, something that they may not you know, typically do, but because you inspired them to do something, they they did better. You can inspire anybody at any age, at you know any, I mean, at, it's any race, any age, any culture. You can inspire someone. You can encourage them. You can motivate someone. And all you have to do is is just sow into their life. And what I mean about that is, for example, it's a um, a movie. It's a movie called, I want to say it's called Pay It Forward. I had never heard of the movie before, but I was um, on um, an airplane flying somewhere some years, years ago. And this was one of the movies they showed. And it was such a good um, movie because it was about paying it forward. And this little boy, I don't remember the whole story, but I know that it was based around this little boy and he wanted to pay it forward. And he paid it forward. And I want to say it start this big tremendous wave but everybody just paying it for it matter of fact i think i just read in the news here 
lately something online or I think it's online I read where someone came in and bought like like several hundred dollar worth of coffee and just paid for the next couple people behind them that got coffee that morning and so it's different way you can inspire people to do something do something good for mankind do something good for others a lot of people are so how can I say so into themselves so top tied up in themselves all they can do is think about me 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 and when you meet someone like that that's just just that's just awful because it's more in this world besides just you and so with that I want you to just just take the time and think about something you can do this week something you can do this week to inspire someone to encourage someone one of my friends told me um, that not long ago she was in the store and I'm not sure if she was having a bad day or what but she said she was um, in the store I want to say it was a grocery store and she said this lady walked up to her she said she don't know why she said the lady walked up to her and the woman has a hand bowed up and says the woman put something in her hand and the woman said um, God bless you do something for your yourself do something kind for yourself and she said she looked up at the woman she said I don't know why the woman um, came to her and did that and she said she opened her hands and she said it was a $20 bill in her hand and she said she couldn't believe it she said but that woman just did not know how much she just really blessed her it really encouraged her that day she said it made her feel good so I don't know like I said if she was going through anything that day or not but she said when the woman gave her that twenty dollars and told her to do something for herself she said it just made her feel good it made it you know feel like it was still some some good people out there in the world some people that care that love others so when I'm telling you to, to, to inspire someone I'm saying to inspire someone do something different you know you can inspire a person with words like I'm talking out to you I want to inspire you to do do this or do that or whatever but you also can inspire someone for just I mean just buying something buying something something small you know it may just be a, a piece of chocolate or it could be picking a flower out like if you're a guy and um, if you you know or a woman but um, especially if you're a guy women love flowers and a lot of people go out and buy flowers but I've seen on so many instances where females love love to just get a flower where a guy was just walking and you know if the husband or you know friend boyfriend whatever the guy just take you know walking and see a flower and you know and cut it and cut the flower or pick it or whatever and bring it to her and so I mean females you can do that to the male too also but what I'm saying is do something to uplift someone inspire someone because a lot of times when you do something to inspire someone that person feel like inspiring someone else and so don't be like this lady I um met <laughs> this lady this particular lady she um, was in minister training and she got up into the um, the pulpit and she made a statement that she want to um that whenever she get up in the morning that she goes to the um the mailbox she said I go to the mailbox every day I go there expecting expecting she said I go there every day I'm expecting money I'm expecting check and it was like so funny because everybody in the audience was like shocked like well who's gonna send you a check you know she's I'm expecting I'm expecting a check I'm expecting money every time I go every day I go to the mailbox with the expecting attitude and I'm expecting the check and when she was saying that the pastor of the church I guess he couldn't <laughs> I guess he couldn't contain himself he yelled out to her he said well have you ever mailed anybody a check yourself and um and it was just funny and everybody just kind of like you know it was kind of funny you know everybody kind of you know giggle because we all knew what he was saying she's going to the mailbox expecting a check has she ever mailed a check out to someone else just I mean has she ever decided just one day take out her checkbook or get some money orders and say I'm gonna send all these people on my list that did something to me kind of my life I'm gonna send all them five dollars I'm gonna send them ten dollars I'm gonna send them twenty five dollars and so he was like, um, have you sold that? You know, and that's what he was basically saying. You go in there um, expecting just this money to fall out the, um, the sky into your mailbox. 
have you done that to me? Have you inspired anybody? You know, a lot of times we want someone to do things for us. How about doing something for someone else? So with that, don't be like the lady that uh, was in minister training and she just go to a mailbox every day expecting and, and you don't do anything for anyone else. And to me, I guess to validate that story, I um, find out more about that particular woman and that's how she, that's, that's from my understanding, that's how she was, that's how she is. Maybe she didn't change that, it's been years ago. But she was the type that always wanted somebody to give her something. She always wanted to, to get something free. As my sister called it, the free and cheap crowd. She always said the free and cheap crowd. They love something free and love something <laughs> cheap. But they don't think about that free is free to you, but it's not free. Like, it's not free. Because someone has to pay for it. Someone. Even if you got it free, it may be free to you, but someone had to to to, to put some money or something to, 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 to have this item come about. So don't be, don't be like the lady in the story expecting something and you haven't, you know, haven't done anything for it. You, you don't, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't care about anybody but yourself. So I'm trying to get you to, to move from being selfish. Do something, do something for someone, inspire someone. If it be a child, if it be whatever. I know I seen people, um, people in, in the store and they buy something someone sometimes may let them you know skip the you know say okay you come in front of me you only have one item now you're in the grocery store say oh you only got one item i got a hundred you know you can come ahead of me i also see and i know i have done it myself with someone in um someone in line and they didn't have enough money you know and so they was like okay i don't have they don't have enough money so they got to put something back you say okay what was a dollar here you go I was in the, uh, one of the, the dollar stores and a guy came there to buy some chocolate milk and it was an um, older gentleman and he had two and when he had his two chocolate milks I was behind him and the cashier rung up the chocolate milks and when she did um, he only had enough for one and he was like I thought these were like two for a uh, dollar and he said, I came all this um, this way to get two. He said, okay. He said, well, I just get one. He said, one is better, you know. One is better not having enough money to get, you know, to get to get one. And so she was like, yes, they used to be, but they went up on the prices. So I, I had never bought the chocolate milk before, but evidently they used to be two for a dollar. And they went up on the price to a dollar each. So when he said that, I was like, um, I was like, just put it on my order. And she was like, you sure? And I was like, yeah, you can just put it on, put it on mine. And she was like, you sure? I was like, yeah. And she was so shocked and amazed. And I was like, it's not but a dollar, but, you know, just bring up his whole order. He didn't have but two. So that's two dollars. He can keep that dollar, you know. And so he couldn't believe it either. And he was, oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. May God bless you. Da, da, da. So I don't know, you know, if he was just thirsty or maybe that was his last he had or however, but... It made him feel really um really good and the cashier she just she she couldn't she couldn't believe it she was like that's so kind you're so kind that's so kind of you so what i'm saying is sometimes opportunity presents itself and some people choose not to to do anything do anything and so that way people you know it feels good when a person say well i'm a christian and someone that don't even know you they can tell by your actions or how you are, but some by a, a, a chance encounter that that they can see your light. They can see God within you, and so do something. I mean, do something. It may be someone that's a senior in your community or at your church or at your job. You know, do something. Do something. Do something kind. Do something kind. Some people. Some people don't even open doors for, for people. You know, I mean, you see someone coming in, they let the door slam in your face. Most people I encounter, they are open um, the door. Like they see you coming um, behind them, they'll leave the door, they'll get their hand and push it out. And so you can, um, you can get through the door or hold the elevator door. But I have ran into um, I, one incident i never forget. It was like, I couldn't believe it. I was um, going into um, the bank. And I went to the um, going to the bank, and when I was going into the um, into the bank, I made it into the bank. That's what it was. I made it into the bank. On my way out, I was walking behind this young guy, 
and I was walking by this young guy. He may have been in his 20s, 30s, and I was walking behind him, and I was like, I mean, I was close behind him. He let the door slam in my face, <laughs> and I couldn't believe it because <laughs> I was like, wow, you know, it would took him two seconds just to, 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 to hold the door. But then um, I was like, you know what, let me just dismiss this that, you know, maybe that's, that was his culture. You know, maybe that's maybe how they do it in, you know, where he's from or whatever. And so, and I got in the car that I was talking about, and that's what we all agreed on. We're like, okay, he, that's, that's wherever, you know, he was from, that, that, that's, that was, that was the culture of that, you know. But I hadn't, you know, just encountered that. That was just like, wow, his like, door just slammed in my face. And, you know, it's one thing someone just, I, mean, I guess he, he could have intentionally slammed in my face, but I didn't know him. I just happened to be walking behind him. And you could say, well, he didn't see me. And that could have been, you know. I mean, I don't have his eyes on mine, but I was so close to him. I'm, I think he saw me. He may have been mad at the bank. You know, who knows? Because, you know, I done walked in plenty of times and someone's mad at the bank. So that could have been it. Maybe it was more at the bank, not me. But I, I was like, wow, I can't believe. I can't believe that somebody would be so rude and just slam a door in a person's face. And then you have those other people that that are run and break their neck to open the door for you. And so you're like, wow. I know one day I was going into a restaurant, I believe, and this little boy, he may have been about, I'm thinking about three or four. He wanted to hold the door open for everybody coming in and out. And his dad was with him. And his dad was like, he's like, open the door, hold the door open for um people. And I was like, that is so kind. That's so kind that he thought you know, enough to sit there and hold the door because they had made it out. And whenever they made it out, he saw it was coming, he ran back and held the door open for us. And he was three or four. And I was like, well, you're raising a little gentleman there. So that's, 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 that's wonderful. So when you do things to inspire others, you teach your children or the youth that's around you to, 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 to help others. I noticed um, this one guy, he's a manager of a restaurant. And he was telling me when he had his um, church church youth group, he said he would take them out to like the, the grocery stores or some of the department stores or whatever. And he said as a humility type teaching, he would have an open door for people, you know. And he said a lot of people, you know, they thought it was so, that was such a good thing. When they would come through, especially, he said some of the older people, whenever they saw like the, young, the youth doing that, they was like, that's so good. It's teaching them respect, you know. And so he said he would do different activities like that so they can learn something. Because sometimes in life people don't, you know, they don't, they don't get that, that teaching or that. They don't even know any better. And tell you another story. I told you I had a lot of stories because I love to inspire. So I want you to inspire someone. I want you, you know saying, treat others like you want to be treated. I um, noticed one, this one guy. He said that that's not the way you know saying they you know saying they were raised. I mean everything was you know, you look out you look out for yourself. You look out for yourself and you don't you don't think about others. And I'm like, wow, you know, that's that's interesting. And that's you know, that's that's the way it was. You know, you you get yours. You you get yours, I get mine, and that's the way it go. But that's not so like wow to me, because I know people think like that and people believe like that. But this particular person father was a, a a pastor of a church and I'm thinking myself wow you know your father's a pastor and that's how you know your race that's you know to to, to look out for your your, your um yourself and I mean I know you got to look out for yourself but the way that this particular person was saying you know it was kind of the extreme and but you know to <clears throat> excuse me to each his own but I, I know that that's you know saying that's this is way some people are. So what I'm asking you to do is to do something kind, do something nice for someone. You may be cutting their grass. As a matter of fact, um, where um where we live for about I want to say two years, two years now give or take, this guy will cut he will he will cut our grass. He just will start cutting our grass and. I know I started coming um, home and I was like, the grass is cut. And so finally I found out why the grass was being cut. My brother was at the house and the guy came by and the, um, the, guy, the guy came by and told my brother that 
if he didn't mind, he would cut the grass. And he wouldn't charge anything. He was like, oh, I got this big lawnmower and I just want to cut the grass. Now, to this day, I still never met this, I met this guy. And he was a neighbor that lived on the, the street. And what I um, found out later, I put it together. One day, these kids came up to my door and they had been there before. And they would come and they were so memorable and they were so, I mean, just so kind. I didn't like know them, know them, but when they come to the door, they were so respectful and yes, ma'am. And they were just full of life and energy. And it would be the, um, sometimes it would be uh, two, two, um, two boys and a girl. And sometimes it would just be a boy and a girl. They were sisters and brothers. And every once in a while, their older brother would come with them. And he may have been in high school. And so, they would come and they would be selling stuff in our neighborhood, like for school. They may be selling stuff for band or for some club they were in. And a lot of times, like with me, if you don't call, like if you don't call the house, I won't come to the door. You have to call me and let me know you're um, coming. Because if and a lot of times I won't even just come to the door. But if I buy a window or however, and I'm if someone's knocking or whatever, I may go look out the window. That's what look out the window to see. Who it was and if it was kids I would come out you know I'm like okay they selling something or something so anyhow these particular kids I came outside I um, mean one day and they were selling I think some donuts and I bought some donuts from them and I told them they can just keep it I can buy the donuts and whatever they were doing but they can keep it because there's no way in the world that you know gonna be able to eat all those donuts so Bought donuts from them. and then they came back um, again this time they were selling some kind of Tupperware or something they were selling for school and I bought some uh, for them. so every time they were selling some they would come to, to, um, to the house and so one day I was standing in the yard and um, a lady pu um, pull up and she said that she wanted to, um, to, to meet me and she wanted to say um, hello she told me she was my neighbor and I was staying in a pretty you know pretty large neighborhood and she says she wants and everybody's like from different states and all that kind of stuff so you know you know you you, you see each other in passing you wave or whatever but she said that she wanted to she wanted to to meet me and say hello because she said her kids were talking about the lady down the street and how the lady down the street you know she bought this about this many donuts or she did this she did that you know and she said she wanted to just just meet me and tell me thank you for being so kind to her her um, kids. Anyhow, fast forward to what I was just saying. One day those kids came back by um, later and I think they may just came out to speak to me and say hello. And like I said, they were very kind and manageable. And that's when I put together that their daddy was the one that was cutting my, um, cutting, that was cutting like the grass, or cutting my grass, cutting all grass or however. And I told my brother, I said, I figure out who's, uh, who the guy is that's cutting the grass. He's like, yeah, the neighbor down the, sh the street. Like I said, we got plenty of neighbors. Anyhow, my brother said he was cutting the grass. I said, oh, I said, okay, now I understand why he's cutting the grass. I said, his kids, every time they sell us something, I said, I always buy something uh, for him for, for and whatever. And I said, that's probably you know, why, you know why he was cutting it. Anyhow, my brother said that the guy was cutting the grass because he was so cool. Because my brother was so cool. I'm like, nobody's cutting the grass because you so cool. You so cool. My brother said he was all that. So that's why the guy was cutting the, the grass. But my brother, he, he liked to be silly, funny, or whatever. But anyhow, the um, the guy was um, the guy was cutting the, um, cutting the grass, and I can't remember if the wife stopped that by or the kids, but they told me that the guy he loved the yard and, and the yard. And a majority is would say, you know, got hearts around it, and it would say, God is love, God is love all around the house. And they got um, the guy that did it, he said he was a tattoo artist, and God had to send him because he did it with his finger. And he wrote, God is love into the border. I have, the border's going around the flowers, and he got his finger, and he actually wrote each one, the one he went to, and put God is love, and has hearts around um like each little part of the flowers and everything and so it was really um, cute and people would stop by and say oh i love that it had hearts and then it had roses stepped into it it it's, it's just different something a design i created in my own little mind but with that putting it all together by me being kind to those kids and paying it for not knowing them being kind to um to them with the, the combination with the God of love stuff, you know, being kind, the wife stopped by, you know, being, being friendly neighbor, whatever. 
evidently they got a lawnmower, a big lawnmower, because our yard's like, not like huge, but they got this big lawnmower and um, he, or tractor, whatever you call it, and the the husband would come and cut the grass. And to this day, I never, I never met the husband, never seen him, but he would come and cut the grass. And he cut the grass, I know, for two years, about two years. But with that, when he was cutting the um, grass, he finally stopped cutting the, um, the grass and I figure out why I don't know this for, um, for sure but I think somebody stopped him one of my neighbors stopped him and asked him to cut that grass and probably said well um, I want you to charge me what you charging her or something like that you know and he cut that grass one day and he stopped cutting all our grass <laughs> so I'm assuming I'm assuming that my neighbor kind of messed, <laughs> messed up the whole grass thing, you know, because he was doing hours for free and who knows what they said. And so anyhow, with that, by inspiring someone, being kind, you never know what kind of blessing you can get in return. Just be kind to people. Inspire someone to do, to, do, to inspire someone to, to be a better person. Inspire the youth. Inspire the senior. Inspire your church from Inspire, you know, be kind if it's your pastor, if it's your boss, whatever. Just do something. Do, do something and let a person know that you that that you care you know even if you don't know let them know that it's some great people out in the world it's some great godly people some good christians and it we don't even have to know you and so with that i want you to inspire someone and as always let go let god and keep it moving contact me at 188 me kim inc or email me at dr lee at please and you'll see all this at the end of the show let go, let God, and keep it moving. Inspire someone today. Thank you. It's good to have someone come into your life. Speak a word of life. Get you up again, up again. Now is the time you can recreate yourself. Now is the time Assert yourself Assert yourself You fail your test Time after time Time after time You tried for the long You've been denied Your energy's gone You're lying around Some fate just for the day, it's hard to find.